Alright, in these videos we're going to talk about taking partial derivatives. And partial derivatives, before normally we had a function, or when you first start calculus, you usually have a function in terms of one variable only. You usually say just x. Um, and now the idea is, well, we've got functions in more than one variable. So for example, suppose I have a function f of x, y equals 3x minus 2y to the fourth. And we're going to calculate now what are called partial derivatives. The only thing you really have to remember is that when you take the derivative with respect to one variable, you treat the other vari variable like a constant. So for example, if I take the derivative, the partial derivative with respect to x, and this is what the little f of x notation represents, you're taking the partial derivative with respect to x. Well, okay, so now any other variable besides x, I'm treating that like a constant. So 2y to the fourth, in my head I'm thinking that's just a number. So when I take the derivative of 3x, I simply get 3. Well, the derivative of negative 2y to the fourth if y is a constant, this whole thing is a constant, and it'll simply disappear, and I'll get minus 0. If I take the partial derivative with respect to y, again, now my x term is like a constant. So 3 times a constant is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of negative 2y to the fourth, I'll get negative 8y to the third power. Okay, so let's do another example here, maybe try to make some more sense out of this. So here we have three variables. We have x, y, and z. So we're going to have to calculate a partial derivative with respect to x, with respect to y, and with respect to z. So if I do the partial derivative with respect to x first. Okay, so again, that means in this case that y and z are just constants. Remember, constants basically just come along for the, the ride. So I'll have y squared z cubed in there. And then if I take the, partial, the derivative of x, the derivative of 1x is simply times 1. And on the other side, notice there's no x terms in there. Well, that means 3 times y times z is just a constant. And again, the derivative of a constant is just 0. So the partial derivative with respect to x will simply be y squared times z cubed. If I take the partial derivative with respect to y, that now means that x and z cubed are constants. So I'll have x, z cubed. Just kind of pull them out front like you normally would with a constant. And the derivative of y squared is 2y. And then if I take the partial derivative with respect to y of the 3yz term, again, the 3z is simply a constant that just comes along. The derivative of y is simply times 1. Okay? So you could rewrite this as 2xyz cubed plus 3z. And now we'll do the last thing with z. Okay? So now z is my variable. The other, the other x and y I'm treating like a constant. So the x and the y squared I leave alone. And now the derivative of z cubed would be 3z squared. And then I'll just, for the other term, again, 3y is a constant. That simply comes along for the ride. And then the derivative of z is just 1. Okay. So the thing to remember on these partial derivatives is that you're treating, depending on what variable you're taking the derivative with respect to, you're treating the other variables like constants, and then just using your normal differentiation rules. All right, so let's do uh, let's do one more here. So now I have a function in terms of r and s. So I'm going to take the derivative with respect to r first. Well, notice I've got an r here and an r in the other part, so I'm going to have to do the product rule. Again, if I take the derivative with respect to r, I'm treating s as a constant. Well, the derivative of 1r is just 1, and then I'll leave the ln of r squared plus s squared term alone. I'll put a plus in between. Now I'll leave the r alone. 
Well, the derivative of ln of something says you get 1 over that stuff, so 1 over r squared plus s squared. But by the chain rule, I have to multiply by the derivative of the inside part. Again, I have to remember that I'm taking the derivative with respect to r, so the s squared is really just like a number. So the derivative of the inside, the derivative of r squared, will give me 2r. But then the s squared, since that's a constant, the derivative of that will simply be 0. So you could rewrite this as ln of r squared plus s squared. And then you'll have 2r squared in the numerator and r squared plus s squared in the denominator. And that'll be your final answer. If I take the derivative of this function with respect to s now, again, now r is just like a constant. So if it was 7 times ln of 49 plus s squared, you would leave the first, the constant alone, so I'm going to leave the r alone. And then I'll take the derivative of the ln part, so I'll get 1 over r squared plus s squared. Again, I have to use the chain rule in this case, but since I'm taking the derivative with respect to s, now r is a constant. The derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of s squared is simply 2s. And again, if you wanted to, you could rewrite this as 2rs over r squared plus s squared, and that would be your final answer. Okay, so this is the basic rule of thumb on um, taking partial derivatives mechanically. Simply, you're treating some of the variables as constants, the others as variables, and then you're just using your normal differentiation rules. It can get a little tricky just, you know, kind of keeping everything in your head, but um, if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. And likewise, I've got tons of other videos on my website. Feel free to take a look. And if you, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll be happy to answer them.